Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so we're back in Orkney, and I'm going to start to work on the detail now. So if we look at this area here and see what we can do about uh, characterizing the rocks that are here. Uh, and I think the first thing to do is to define them by putting in some more of the darks a little bit more distinctly. So I'm going to use a small brush. This is this is a two, um, so it's got quite a fine point on it. And if I take ultramarine, and uh, a bit of burnt umber, just to darken it down a bit. Let me see that, test that. That's nice and dark, isn't it? Nice mark, that one. Um, calligraphy. It's a good thing. Right. So, I'm going to start um, on this area here and work frontwards, because I think that is probably going to be the best way to do it. And I see straight away I've got my drawing wrong. How exciting. Um, that there is actually a very thin straight line there. It doesn't matter at this stage because uh, I've just got various marks on it. And then you see that one that goes up there. Amazing how you get these things wrong, isn't it? I think I need to cut down the bring this down a bit here because this rock back here is pushing forward the rock that makes this light part here. So I need to, to bring that in tone. A bit now. I don't want it to get boring. So I'll just say uh, Add a little touch of purple in there just for a bit of fun. Near the bottom. And take it down from there. Right. Now then, we go on from there, we've got quite a deep shadow here. So if I, again, put that mark in and try to get the mark that is actually there. And I put it in here. A fairly straight mark, but around about here, now, what I'm going to do is wet the ground above it so we get a feeling that this rock is um, getting gradually lighter as it approaches the light. And there's a deep crevice here, which is creating the, um, the gap between the two. I think that's working all right. Again, it's not entirely accurate from what's there, but uh, you know, you've got to make the best you can with what you've got, haven't you? And if I go here, there is quite a deep shadow down there. And the sense of something there, rather dark, between this one. that one 
And before it gets too exciting, I'm going to wet that as it goes off. Um, into the shadow. You see how if you make it bleed like that, it it, uh, it helps to, if you like, undefine the edge. And again, just a little bit of water on the bottom edge to give it somewhere to bleed into. Just gives you that little bit of definition that is so helpful when you are trying to make rocks go into the ground and know that there's grass there. And the, the edge isn't clear cut, so you have to make it not clear cut. The way to do that is to get things to bleed nicely for you. Right, now, if I look at the next um, break down, that's this one here. I seem to have this in more or less the right place. Um, I mean, nobody's going to go back and look. So uh, that's all right by me. And again, I want it to bleed. I don't want it to be quite so definite. So I'll, I can go back and make it definite if I want to. But at this stage, I want that to be a crisp edge. So I'm happy with that. Let's see where we go along here. This is quite interesting here. And then there's a, a curve there. And finally, this one goes off up that way. Now, oh, I'm running out of paint, would you believe? Right, so I've got this, and this is quite a dark shadow here, so I'm going to add some more paint to that. Just to the edge. It, it doesn't do any good if you just put in a, a sort of lump of, oh, well, that's, that's all jaggy, so I'll just put jaggy bits in. You have to try to get the, um, the shapes that are actually there. It does, it does help. And there is above that a line. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I think I've missed the boat somewhere. However, here we are. Right, let's continue down here while we're working on it. Um, there's a little inlet there, and then we come down here. About time I had a bit of purple, so I'm just changing the colour of what I'm using. And this is practically indescribable as far as tone is concerned. It's uh, One of the things about putting water on to make it dribble a bit is you lose the colour, so you've got to put it back if, if you need to. So there'll be a little bit of working back. And that does definitely come there. And it comes down here. This is all quite dark here, so I'll just put it in dark. Some nice, nice tones in there from the previous washes. Where are we? We're here. We've got that little dribble in there. That comes down there. Right, so we go up here. And there's an area here. See, I'm, I'm being quite specific about this. Because if, you, if you put in a lot of detail here, you can get away with less detail further back. 
Right, and this comes down quite heavily down here. And that is still dark. I don't want to lose all of those. That's rather nice. So, patch of dark around here. Another area of dark down here. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. This is quite dark here. Now, if we go on down here, this is getting a bit hard edged, so let me just soften that a bit. Uh, that got hard. Okay, let's disguise it a bit then. Uh, Put on a bit of, come on you. There we are, I've softened it off a bit. And it comes down here, and there's just here. Remember to make the vertical is vertical. It's so easy to put these lines in as, as diagonals because this line is a diagonal. And you're thinking, well, that's got to be a right angle. But because of what you're doing, you're coming further forward. Um, try to remember when you're painting, all verticals are vertical, whatever the rest of the picture is doing. Right, so... If I add some more dark in here, oh, get this nicely wet down here because this spreads quite a long way. Put that in. Can you see how it's spreading nicely? And if I give it a little bit of help, it's it's making some sort of sense of this dark area here. Um, does in some sense define the edge of the, the the dark bit. You can see how it's coming down here. Right, okay. Now, A little bit of grass up here. This rock here is surrounded by a bit of grass. So let's put a bit of grass in there. I think that's the only bit of grass we've got. Um, and it's got in quite dark. Right, so that's, that's working quite nicely now. I want that to be too defined. Now, if I go back to these rocks here, some part of this um, has. Oh, go right now. First thing to do is to wet this rock. This is the one that's standing in front of the square one. There's a square one standing on edge, an ortho stat. Uh, and in front of it is a smaller bashed up one, which is here. So if I wet that one, down to there, and then I pick up a little bit, I'm using a bit of purple this time. I pick up a bit of purple, I can put in some of the, the bashes in this lump of rock, so that it doesn't look quite so... Actually, looking at it, it goes right across there. 
Here's your find when you haven't got a gun. Right, so it comes down there. So this, in fact, is too high. This is all one. So I'll bring this down here. And wet the ground in front of it so that it takes on a touch of the dark green. This is much darker green in the front here. Um, it's, you know, it's much, much darker, so that's all right. Again, I don't want a hard edge, so I'm going back over the edge with a bit of water just to soften the edge until I get there, basically. Right, the one behind it is also got a little bit of uh, So I'm wetting it, and then I'm picking up a bit in really neat paint, if I can, on the tip of the brush. And provided I not put too much water on, I should be able to put on the odd spot of Right. I think they're not bad. They work quite nicely. So let's transfer to the other side while we're waiting for that to to dry and sort itself out. You'll find um, as you're working, if when you leave it alone, the paint sort of moves its own accord, and uh, that sometimes improves it. So it's well, it's well worth just leaving it for a little while while you go across and work on something else. If I can get this to that side, to the same sort of level, then I can put in what I want to do here. I think originally I started dark with the grass and brought it light as it came forward. Not sure I'm going to stick with that. We'll see. We'll see. Right. Now, I'm going over here. There's two flat rocks here placed on top of each other. So if I take a little of my mixture, and again, I'm working with a thin line here. And I don't really want that thin line to go anywhere. Just there, it's doing fine. And here is a very thin line and then it thickens there because it's got a hole in it. And then we come around here and again, um, take some water, take some paint off the brush, put a bit of water on it, and use that paint to create um, what, you, what you want here. Now again, this is throwing a mild shadow on the grass. So I'm wetting the area underneath. I'm taking in some neat paint on the tip of the brush. I'm going in, I hope, with a very thin line there. Is that better? Yes. Hardly. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Right, so this is the bit I'm doing here. Right, now then, um, there's that rock there. And then above it, this rock has quite a deep shadow there. I think I need a bit, take a bit more water with it. 
So here we are. It's quite fiddly, this. It's sometimes watercolor can be fiddly. It's, it's nice and sloshy when you want it to slosh, but sometimes it's better to be a little less sloshy. So I find when I'm working from photographs, I tend to be less sloshy than uh, working in the, in the fresh air. Because when you're working in the fresh air, you haven't got the time to muck about. You've just got to get on with it. Now, although that shadow is quite strong, the area above it is not as pale as I've got it there. But that's a nice crisp edge, isn't it? That will show up when I um, do this part here. Anything else I want to do to that for the time being? I think we're okay for the time being. So now I'm going to move to this rock here, which is another orthostat, um, here, standing on one edge. We do a lot of this. Um, there is some rather hair-raising construction, which has lived there since for about 5,000 years, with these very thin, well, relatively thin, um, rocks placed upright, vertical, like leaves in a book. And then on top of that, they built a wall like this, balanced on the top. And it's still there after 5,000 years, so they must have known what they were doing. I just find it rather hair-raising. Right, so let's place that one in this group. We start here. And there's a sort of line comes down there, and then it sweeps around here. Uh, I, I would suppose that what's happening is that the grass is um, building up around there and, and the earth is building up as it does. I mean, these were all covered, they've been excavated, so there must have been plenty of earth around. When... Well, that's a little bit of water just to soften the edge. I bring the water down here. Now that is actually grass. So I'm going to put in um, a grassy color. Down here. Believe it or not, because it is actually grass. And it comes all the way down here. Seems to stop there. And again, I don't want that hard edge. So if I take some water and just run it along the edge there and give it somewhere to bleed into, I won't get a firm hard edge because I want to bring that down when I'm working down here. Just to soften the edge so that I don't have a hard edge to have to get rid of. Uh, also, that's a bit straight. So I'll. Just dab a bit of water up there too. Right, now then. With my dark colour, I'm needing to put in this line here. It's quite a strong construction line. It helps you to see what the rocks are doing, so it's quite an important line. And round about here, there's a strong shadow. Also an important shadow, because that is telling you that this rock is in front of that rock. And it goes, and it's also telling you it's a bit of a bumpy rock. So you mucking about with. Now, that's not quite so definite. So again, just a little bit of water on that face. Um, I don't want it that dark. Ugh, gosh. Concentration required. Right, let's look at a bit up here because it looks quite convoluted there. So I'll take some of the dark 
Let's see what happens here. There's an area here. And it's quite a thick area, so let's make it thick. And it divides that rock from that one which comes over here. Now, the upper edge of those rocks and this rock will be defined by what I do here, so I'm not going to worry too much about them at the moment. But I do want to make it a little bit darker here. Just to differentiate one rock from another. So this one is separate from this one. This over here is darker too. Right. Ten minutes. Right. Just got blood the gums. <laughs> ah, there we are. How are we doing? Oh, it's working. It's a she looking at me. Screen. Right. Now let's continue down here then. We've got that one defined there. So let's look at the next one. That's this one here. It also has a deep shadow. Um, okay, I'm going to introduce a bit of pressure just for a bit of fun. Um, there's a sort of shape here. which comes down there. And then down there. And down there. This at the bottom is quite, quite a big shape there. And it goes around there. And, and again, You've got to watch. I don't want that to be hard, so I'll just put in some moisture so that it's got somewhere to go. Softens the edge. Can you can see over here how much softer that is? So that if I work back on top of it, I'm not trying to get rid of a line. And you can see there, I think, maybe, but that is actually quite hard. I've managed to soften that. I have to go either ignore it because you know who's going to pick it up, or um, do something about it when. I'm doing the overpainting. Right, okay. I'll go back to the, the purple and the Prussian together, which makes quite a nice colour. Makes a different colour. Um, this area here is quite dark. Depends on how far back you want to go with a touch of light there. And again, I don't want that to be too harsh, so I'll just um, take it out a bit. See where else I can go. Now then, what happens here? I think what we have up there is a bit more of the grassy sort of stuff. So that's good because it means we can change the colour. This comes down here. I might find that I want to texture that eventually when I, if I start nitpicking. Um, but there's a thin bead of light on the top of this rock. So if I bring this up to here, like that, and this wanders off down here. Because again, between these rocks, is, there's still earth. Now that little bit up there is actually quite dark. I'm going to put in some some of the blue just to darken it off a bit. Right. 
feel I have lost my way somewhat, but uh, like I say, nobody's going to actually go and look, so we don't have to get too excited. Very thin veil. Yeah. That one. What's this one doing? There's a patch of something there. And that. Yeah, this this actually curls round a lot, doesn't it? And it's well, I thought I was gonna finish this today. Five minutes. Uh, right. So you, you can see how careful I'm being um, about getting the uh, the tones that I want. I need to darken these a bit. To put them in sort of shadow. And I haven't used any viridian today, so maybe I put it in here. It's a bit violent, but you know. If you add mix something else at the same time, you can get away with it. Right, so th this area here is still not sorted. It doesn't look natural. This is a better effect. And when I go back, when I, next week, I'll be working on this area here. Uh, and then finally on, on the back area. I might get all that done next week. I might not. We'll see. But that that's, gives you some idea how to tackle the uh, blocks and things. Don't, whatever you do, uh, especially if you try and tackle this bit over here. Just say, oh, they're rocks piled on top of each other, so I'll just put in lines to make them look like rocks piled on top of each other. You really need to try and be a bit more meticulous. Some of the rocks are different sizes. Some of them uh, are more widely spaced, so you've got shadows. Um, sometimes you've got two thin rocks beside a bigger rock. And then this area here is much darker. It's partly covered with lichen, um, partly with dirt or grass or whatever is around at the time. Uh, partly the limestone has colored a bit, taking moisture, and it's not quite the same as the rest of it. But it gives you some idea of how to, um, to tackle various bits of rock. OK, good luck. And uh, just to tell you, I'm not on Facebook anymore, so if you want me to see your pictures, you have to send them to me by email. Um, I, I uh, changed my computer per force and just didn't get back on Facebook again. I'm quite happy with that, so that's how it's going to be. Thank you very much, all of you, for watching, and uh, good luck with what you've done, and see you soon. <laughs>